with the Tanyapura crew and half hour meditation with the crew. And it's funny, we did, um, I, did a, I did a bike run workout by myself and then I went to the pool and just started swimming with these guys. And then after I got invited to go do some uh, a group meditation with them. And uh, their coach gets them to go do the meditation every, every two weeks and it's a half hour meditation. So um, they really don't get much benefit out of it other than maybe like some, some half hour relaxation. But a lot of them don't take it seriously. Like people are on their phone in there, other people are just like scuffling around, other people are like sleeping. Uh, I think me and this other girl were the only person who actually like sat and just actually meditated, just focused for like half hour on, on nothing. I realized afterwards that meditating once every two weeks is like wanting to get healthy and eating a piece of fruit every two weeks. Or it's like wanting to get more sleep and getting an eight hour sleep every two weeks. Or it's like wanting to get really good at swimming and swimming every two weeks. It's like, it doesn't happen. Uh, if you want to really get the benefit out of something, you gotta do it often, you gotta do it regularly. It's funny when people tell me they're like, um, they're like, oh yeah, I had a big salad today. And they're all happy about the salad that they had, and uh, it's like a one-time thing for them, you know? And they think that just having that one salad is going to make them healthy. Or those detox juices, people drink a detox juice, they're like, oh, I'm much healthier now. It's like, the juice, drinking a, a cup of juice isn't going to make you healthy. The juice will allow you to be healthy if you continue to drink it long term. Drink smoothies, if you have a morning smoothie every morning, that will allow you, that will enable you to be healthy. But the smoothie's not gonna make you healthy. No more than this watermelon's gonna make me healthy. But if I keep eating this, these watermelons day in, day out, at the, at the exclusion of other things, then I'll, I'll be healthy. My body will naturally be healthy. And uh, that's how things work, man. They accumulate day in, day out. Let's get into this melon. This is my first one in Phuket. So we'll see how she goes. It was about three dollars for this thing. Three dollars. I like getting good deals on things, but this one wasn't a good deal. But it looks so good. Oh, baby, that's a prize winner. That's a prize winner. Check it out, cheesy. That's a prize winner. Prize winning watermelon. Okay, so why did I cut it like this? I wanted to. Um, teach you guys something if you, if you don't know it already. The bottom of the melon and the top of the melon, top, bottom, bottom, top, one side is sweeter than the other. If you were to share it with somebody, if my imaginary friend here, Timmy, wanted to share a watermelon with me and I cut it like this and gave him this half and I ate this half, I might be thinking, damn, Timmy's half is going to be sweeter than mine and he might be thinking Ted's half is going to be sweeter than, than his. So it's always, uh, when you're sharing it with someone, cut it lengthwise. The same goes with uh, avocados as well. Cut it lengthwise because the top and bottom are different. Papayas especially, cut it lengthwise, uh, the top and bottom. And it depends on different varieties. Some varieties, the top is sweeter. Some varieties, the bottom is sweeter. It's, fruit is a very strange thing that way. But if you cut it lengthwise, you know for sure that uh, you're going to, both you and your friend are going to be having equal parts Sweet. Yeah. I, so, am I gonna eat this whole melon? I don't know. I totally eat by feel. I don't, I don't really uh, count calories or uh, measure how many calories I've burned and then eat because of the amount of calories I've burned. But I do measure the amount of calories I've burned and then just say, hey, that's cool. I burned, you know, like this morning, for example, I burned 800 calories on the bike and run. And the swim, so swim, bike, and run about 800 calories. That's not going to affect my mentality towards the food I eat today. I'm just, I'm still going to eat by feel. Uh, and another thing to keep in mind too, the center of the watermelon, you probably already know this, is a lot sweeter than, than the rest of it. But so maybe it's, I know some people who eat along the outside first and then on the inside. But I can't even talk right now. I'm salivating so much. I like to go straight for the center because fruit, unlike unlike other food, unlike other food with fruit, you 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 eat the best stuff first and you, you don't even eat the rest. But with cooked food, it's like you eat, you, eat the, you eat the worst stuff first and you save the best for last. You save dessert for last. Dessert is the best part of the meal. Everyone knows that. But they eat it last. They eat, they, they eat some so-so food first and then they eat the dessert. So many times I asked my mom, my dad, and my sister, I was like, 
How was dinner? And they'll be like, it was, it was all right. It was, it was pretty good. So imagine if I ate food that was pretty good, so-so. No, 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 no. I, I couldn't do that. I love the fruit I eat. If I don't love the fruit I eat, I, uh, I, d I don't eat it again. Like, I'll never eat that same so-so yeah, food again. It's like, uh, the, the food I eat is like, so, so good all the time. So I think this will be a good one. If it's not good, I probably won't eat it. Mmm. 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 Oh my god, guys. Brings me back to the early 90s when watermelons were always this sweet. Oh, it's so good. It is so good. I want to share it with you guys. Here you go. Have so. Mmm. Mmm. The sugars saturate my cells. Oh man. This is a good one. Enough said. This is a good one. <clears throat> Prize winner. Prize winner. Worth it. Worth the three bucks. Absolutely worth the three bucks. Mmm. Watermelon seeds. I swallow them. I used to spit them out, but can't be bothered anymore. I eat so many melons, I just gotta shovel them in, seeds and all. Uh, some people spit them out, but what do you do? Hmm. Food addiction is a funny thing because some people don't even believe in it. Some people think food addiction is like the boogeyman. It doesn't even exist. But it's the same people who don't believe in emotional eating, the same people who don't believe in food addiction. And there's some people that are like, how do you get addicted to calories? Please explain that. Well, ask any obese person how you get addicted to calories, and they'll tell you. Ask anyone who just um, had a hard breakup with their girlfriend and boyfriend, and they'll tell you all about emotional eating or emotional starvation. Two sides of the coin. Uh, oftentimes, if there's a, there's a bad breakup, and two people are involved, uh, some person in the relationship might just starve themselves for a couple days, just not eat because they're so emotionally distraught. Or, you know, if, if their parent dies or their son dies or their, their girlfriend dies, whatever, they won't eat for a few days. They're just so messed up emotionally. And other, other people, they'll just eat, 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 eat when they're emotionally distraught. It, it helps them deal with their stress. That's something that, it's, that we're conditioned with since childhood. You know, we're crying baby, we get the mother's nipple, oh, it calms us down, chills us out. Um, and when we get off the nipple, we're crying baby, we're crying, 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 we're so stressed out. Crying babies are just super stressed. And the parents just feed them. Whatever, here, have a candy, have a chocolate bar, boom, baby stops crying. So we learn to associate food with, oh, feeling safe, no stress. And that carries over to, to adulthood. So, but with, with, with food addiction, it's slightly different than emotional eating. Emotional eating is, is, every now, is, is an every now and then thing. Um, and fl fluctuations with, with, your, with your emotions. But food addiction is something that's ongoing. It's, it's a daily thing. And, and it affects everyone, but it affects everyone differently. So there are some people who smoke cigarettes, for example. They're addicted to cigarettes and they know it. Everyone knows it. But they only smoke like half a pack a day. And they stay that way their whole life. They just, they see themselves, they have a self-image of a half a day pack of smoke. smoke. Smoker. They see themselves, they have a self-image of someone who's half a pack a day type of smoker. And there are other smokers, as we know, who will smoke two packs a day. And they have the self-image of someone who smokes two packs a day. But both people are addicted, whether you're smoking half a pack or two packs, you're addicted. And these people know it, smokers know it, they, they know they're addicted. And some people might say, uh, for example, with, with marijuana, you can't get addicted to marijuana, you're just, you're not addicted to it, you're just dependent on it. You just depend it, you just depend on it. It's the same bloody thing, man. I used to be dependent on marijuana, I used to smoke it first thing in the morning, first thing before lunch, first thing right before bed, right before bed, every night right before bed, minimum once a day right before bed, but ideally right when I wake up. And then right before I did any task, like mow the lawn or go to school or do my homework or watch a movie or go for a walk, read a book, eat smoke first, 
and then right before bed every night. And I literally couldn't sleep unless I had a, had a hoot. You couldn't sleep unless you had some. I couldn't sleep unless I had some. You needed it. And I remember one time I tried to quit. I stayed up for like two or three nights. I had to, I had to miss school because I couldn't sleep. And um, I, I just had to quit, but I couldn't sleep. So I finally I gave in. I just had a little hoot, boom, right to sleep, no problem. So whether I was addicted or dependent, it doesn't really matter. I needed it. And addiction is basically... The nature of addiction is basically wanting and needing something that you know you really don't want. But when the, when the, when the craving strikes, you want it. You want it, you want it, you want it, and you feel like you need it. But you know that you really don't want it. When, once, once, you, once you have the fix, once you start your, on your come down, you realize, oh, I'm never going to do that again. I, I don't want it. How many people have you heard say, oh, I'm never going to drink again, man. I had such a rough night last night. And the next weekend, they're out drinking again. Addiction comes in many, many shapes and sizes. Just like the person who, who only smokes half a pack and other people smoke two packs a day. Um, there's drinkers who just drink every single weekend with, with their buddies and they, they, can't, they can't say no. They're just, they're, they're hooked. Um, and that could be an emotional thing. It might not be that they actually like, need the alcohol to, 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 to function. Um, but it's just when they're over there out with their friends, they, they, need, that, they need that booze to, to connect socially. But um, with, with cooked food, it's like cooked food is also an addiction, man. And not many people are talking about it. Cooked food is an addiction, but not many people talk about it because everybody does it. It's so socially accepted. And it's kind of like how in, in, in some cultures, um, like in some cultures, like in, in Kuwait, for example, nobody drinks booze. Nobody drinks booze. You, can, you can't even really get booze in Kuwait. And if you do, it's like really, really expensive and it's, it's really frowned upon. But in our, in our culture, in Canada, in America, you know, you, if you don't drink, you're a freaking weirdo. You know, you just got to drink, 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 drink. So cooked food is a cultural thing, guys. If you go to the Woodstock Fruit Festival, you're in that culture. You're in that fruitarian vibe culture. You're in that raw vegan culture when you're at Fruit Fest for those week or two weeks. It's a culture. And in that culture, cooked food is, is frowned upon. You know, you, you, don't eat, you don't eat cooked food. And everybody, everybody, there's a consensus among all the fruitarians that don't eat cooked food, just keep it raw. It's easy, cooked food's addicting, blah, 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 blah. Uh, but then as soon as you step out of that fruit fest, you go back to the airport, you see everyone eating just crap and it's totally accepted. So uh, cooked food is, is, is a cultural, culturally accepted drug. And again, not many people are, are, are willing to say that because your mom's addicted, your dad's addicted, you used to be addicted, or you're currently addicted. And nobody wants to admit that they're freaking addicted, but the first step to overcoming any addiction, the first step to, to, to getting anywhere further than where you are now is to accept where you are now, just accept it. And I have accepted that I'm a recovering cooked food addict. And I'm always going to be a recovering cooked food addict. And it, it's hard for me to, to even be around people eating cooked food because I'm still, I'm still a recovering cooked food addict. And it's like, you, you take someone who's trying to quit cigarettes and you put them around a bunch of smokers it's, it's quite difficult for that person to, to be around the smokers because every fiber in their body is saying, I really don't want to smoke, therefore I don't really even want to be around you guys. So socially it can, it can be hard being around people eating cooked food, but uh, it really helps take the conversation off cooked food completely. So if I'm eating my watermelon in, in social situations and other people are you know, drinking beer and eating their pasta and talking about food, I try and change the subject. Mmm. 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 I set the example, eat my food, and I change the subject. I talk about triathlon, I talk about travel, I talk about business, I talk about whatever, I talk about all sorts of things. Just take the topic off food. Unless they ask me a direct question about the food, in which case I um I just try and give them the most straightforward, simple answer I can without insinuating anything without insulting them but uh and most people like i wouldn't i wouldn't tell most people that you're addicted to cooked food because some people find take that quite personally they, they they become insulted with it and nobody wants to admit that they're addicted especially when they're not ready to go free to go clean uh for the longest time i was addicted to, to marijuana but for i was addicted to marijuana for five years for four of those years i would not admit it 
I would get angry at people who told me I was addicted. So if you're watching this now, and you eat good food, and you feel kind of angry, or not angry, but you just think I'm stupid or a dumbass for saying that you're addicted, I felt the exact same way when people told me that about my addiction to marijuana. I was like, you don't know shit. I smoke it because I want to. I'm not addicted. I can stop if I want. What happens when I tried to stop? Couldn't even sleep, guys. Couldn't even sleep. But it took me four years to even attempt to quit. And then uh, only once I knew that I was like, physically addicted, physically dependent on it, I, um, I said, okay, I have a problem. I admit. I surrender. Like, help, help me get out of this. And then I took it one step at a time. I didn't just go, boom, cold turkey, no more smoking weed. I bought a vaporizer. So instead of smoking it, I just vaped it. Vap va vaporizing is basically, um, it's many different types, but it's basically, you, you put weed, marijuana on, on, a metal, on a metal screen, and the screen, the metal screen gets very, very hot. It gets heated electrically, because it gets very, very hot. And then the marijuana on the top, the water vapor just vaporizes into this big bag, this big plastic bag, and a fan blows it up. So it fills up the bag with this mist, this vapor, which is full of the active component, THC, and you suck in that vapor. And it just feels like you're breathing in um, air. It kind of dries your throat out a little bit, but nothing like smoking. You can, you can vaporize like tons and tons and tons, and you won't, you won't have a sore throat or anything. Um, and it's, there's far less chemicals, like hardly any chemicals when you vaporize compared to smoking. And there's a lot of people who are so addicted to, to smoking marijuana that they can't even take that step and just do vaporizing. Um, but anyone who's really into health, they, they get into vaporizing. So I started getting into health, I started getting into vaporizing. But then I was like, man, I'm still addicted to this thing. I need to get high every night. And like I said, being addicted is wanting what you really don't want. So when, I, when, it, when it was time to, to, to get high, to blaze, I haven't said that word in a long time, to blaze right before bed, 8 p.m., 9 p.m., whatever. I, um, I knew I didn't want to smoke it, but around that same time every night, I wanted it. It was like, okay, I want it, I'm gonna have it. And the next day, I was like, okay, hey, not gonna do it. I don't want it, I don't want it, I don't want it. That time of night, okay, I want it. Same with cooked food. When I first tried to quit cooked food, I went all day, I don't want it, I don't want it. I'm just gonna live on watermelon, I'm just gonna live on bananas, papayas, the good stuff. And what happens at 6, 7 p.m.? I want cooked food. I want it. There's nothing anyone can say to say or do to stop me. I'm going to get it. I want it. That's how addictions work. Same, same goes with, with anyone recovering from cocaine or meth or cigarettes. Uh, you get to a point where you, you want it. You actually want it. And so anyone like me saying, hey, you're, you're, you, you're addicted, blah, blah, blah. You guys can say, fuck you, man. I want to eat this. I want to smoke this. I want to snort this. Of course you do, because you're addicted. That's how addictions work. But you really, you know in your deepest heart of hearts that you don't want any balls and chains. You want to be totally free. Mm. You don't want to have to eat cooked food. Trust me, you don't want that. You don't even have to trust me. You know that. You already know this stuff. I'm just reminding you. Mm. But just like casual smokers, Casual coffee drinkers who drink coffee once a week, smoke once a week, once a month, once a year type thing. There are people who aren't as addicted to cooked food as others. They're going to get a bunch of hate comments and messages, people saying, hey, did I cook, cook food if I want? I don't get any cravings, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, that's nice. <clears throat> you're, you're, one, you're one person. And I get messages from people sending me, Ted, I'm, I wake up in the middle of the night. I'm not even hungry, but I just need my cooked food, blah, 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 blah. And they binge, 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 binge. I get messages like this weekly, people messaging me saying how they're, they're binging on cooked food and they're addicted to it and they want to get off it. And I think I'm the only one getting these messages, one of the only people getting these messages, because I'm the only one who sees cooked food as a drug and actually talks about it in this light. There's not many people doing that. Because you get a lot of hate. I get, a lot of my friends, man, they, they, they get angry and upset because I think, uh, I think they're, they're, they're addicts, which... It's, it's a harsh term, I agree. Addict, addict is a harsh term, but uh, it is what it is. You can call it whatever you want. If you eat cooked food on a daily basis, if you do anything on a daily basis, uh, and you try and stop and you have some, some difficulties with it, then, then you're addicted. Uh, 
Now, I'm not saying I'm not addicted to anything either, but substance-wise, I'm not addicted to any substance. But I am addicted to social media. I'm addicted to, to Facebook, I'm addicted to YouTube, addicted to Gmail, addicted to Instagram. They're, it's a really stupid addiction, and I, um, I, try to, I try to get the best of it by just not going on it, but uh, it's, it's, uh, <laughs> it's, it's an addiction for sure. Like, you don't want to check it, but come time to check it, you want to check it. You know, you don't want to check your email, you just checked it two minutes ago, but you check it again anyway, and boom, you get a notification. Oh my God. Or you check Facebook one minute and there's nothing, you check it again the next minute. Oh my God, notification, click it. Who cares? You don't even need the notification, man. Like, yeah, so social media is my addiction right now, but substance-wise, I've gotten off all my addictions, all my cooked food addictions, green tea addictions, cigarette addictions, marijuana addictions. These are all things I had to overcome, guys. And it all started with accepting the fact that I was addicted. And when I first went raw, there was no raw till four. There was no middle ground. So you're either raw or you're just vegan. And I didn't want to be vegan anymore. I wanted to be raw. I wanted to be low-fat raw vegan. And whenever I ate cooked food, I wasn't like, yeah, I'm raw till four. I'm in, I'm in, the, I'm in the raw till four culture. I'm in the community now. I'm, I'm part of the raw till four crew. No, it was like... Damn, I, I failed, I, I, I binged, I, I went back and I, I caved in. So there was no, there was no, um, there was no acceptance of that in, in online or in, in my mind either. It was just like, it's like, damn, I ate cooked food, but I learned from it, and then I tried again the next day. And I went back and binged on cooked food, and I tried again the next day. And then some days I make it the whole day, and I said, yes, I did it. How did I do it? Well, let's see. I got enough calories, I got enough sleep, I got a good amount of exercise. And I wasn't focused on the cooked food at all. You know, on the days when I would screw up and I eat cooked food again, I said, damn, what happened? And I said, well, I didn't eat enough the day before. I didn't eat enough, you know, before or after my workout. Um, I've been focusing on cooked food. And I'm kind of stressed out right now. So you actually learn from that. You say, hey, you're actually stressed. You didn't get enough calories. Uh, and you, you, learn, you learn from every... every, every um, Took time you slip up. Well, I did anyway, but you, you can too if you wanna if you wanna get get better. But it all starts with accepting the fact that you're addicted in the first place, which most people don't want to do. They don't even want to take that step. So it's all good. I'll just keep making videos, spreading the good word, just fresh, clean fruit, and um, prove prove that it's possible, guys. I'm here to prove that it's possible, and I'm not the only one proving it's possible. There are other raw vegans. There are other fruitarians. I'm just doing it with athletics in a way that not many other people are doing. Um, but I'm only, I'm only just beginning, guys. I've, I've been on this path for, for six years, and um, both, both with, with triathlon and, and, and fraternism, but I'm, I'm ready to take it to the next level, I'm dedicating the next year of my life to just training for triathlon and um, spreading the fruit message. I haven't really spread the fruit message too hard in the past, but I'm willing to take it to the next level. And I uh, appreciate you guys watching these videos. If you want any more videos like this, this video is kind of all over the place, but um, if you want any specific topics, I know some people mess messaged me. They said they want to hear more about my, my marijuana addiction, cook food addiction past, so this video was for you guys. And um, maybe we'll do a video in the future about training or, or something like that. You guys let me know. But anyways, I'm going to have to polish off this watermelon. I don't want to talk and eat at the same time. It interferes with digestion and... Uh, Catch you guys later. Thanks for watching. Peace. Yeah, I'll give you a little more peace, actually. One more peace. You guys deserve it. Here you go. Here you go.